All right, let's get straight into it. Joining me now, Sky News political editor Andrew Clannell. Andrew, the RBA decision there, the rates on hold, 4.1 per cent. We've still got higher than expected or higher than a desirable inflation. We've got surging oil prices, of course, flowing through to fuel prices. As she says today in a statement that uh, rate hikes are still on the table, we've got one in five borrowers in mortgage stress. Uh, those numbers there, too, on the budget, over $100 billion wiped off in terms of export income in coal and iron ore. I mean, forget what the voice outcome is. Uh, the PM wakes up on October 15, on Sunday, October 15. This is his new reality, isn't it? All of this uh, economic stuff on the table and, and absolutely cost of living. Yeah, it's a concern. It's a massive concern. Um, I'm not sure about the export income prediction in the sense, Peter, I've been covering for years now underestimations in the commodity prices. And I think uh, people will be after our coal and gas for some time. So, uh, yeah, I, I take that one with caution. But inflation mm -hmm. is, is, is stubborn. It's dangerous. Uh, you'd think there could well be another rate hike. You just don't want many more than that. The biggest problem I think they've got at the moment is house prices and housing, actually, and rental prices. Because that, they are... Uh, <laughs> increasing at a ridiculous rate in a place like Sydney and with the immigration coming in and that, that work hasn't been done in terms mm. of housing in the last few years, that's going to, you know, hit a cliff at some point. That's the way I see it. Yeah, I'm going to get into that, particularly the trades issue with Lindsay Partridge in just a moment. But um, I want to pay... Two things are happening now in the Voice campaign. You've got a strong negative now running from the Yes camp that a no vote means no progress mm. with the with the implied position there that what you know they're not going to spend another dollar on indigenous affairs in this country if the voice goes down well we all know that's complete rubbish but you've got this line too from Noel Pearson and others that there is no plan B he was out on radio this morning have a listen what is plan B we We're, need plan B there is no plan B Mate, I've been at this for 30 years, working on these problems from the ground up, and I'm telling you that there is no plan B. Yeah, and I hope if the voice goes down, that there is no plan B, that it is killed off and doesn't come back to try and divide Australians again. But then you've got all this stuff going on now on the ground. I know people who are out in polling booths today. We've got that signage from, uh, from the Yes camp very close to the AEC signage. They have been warned over that. Uh, but the bloke in charge, the Liberal in charge of the Yes campaign ground game, well, he was caught out doing the same thing in Victoria for the Liberal Party. Enough's enough. Yeah, so uh, your producers pointed this out to me just before the show. It's incredible, isn't it? Simon Frost is a former Victorian Liberal Party chief and key advisor to Josh Frydenberg. He's now the Yes 23's Chief Operations Officer appointed in May. And three years ago, after the 2019 election, he admitted in a uh, uh, disputed Court of Returns hearing, Frydenberg and, and Gladys Liu, there were challenges to their elections by independents, including Oliver Yates, you might recall, with Josh Frydenberg. Mm -hmm. That signs written in mm -hmm. Chinese at polling booths on election day were designed to look like official AEC signage. Simon Frost, who authorised the signs, said that the signs were intended to appear as though they were AEC core flutes. Gee whiz. I mean, when the Yes campaign's trying to uh, create some sort of moral ground for itself, this is, this is really silly stuff. Yep. And the AEC, as yet, has not demanded the Yes campaign take them down. I think the AEC needs to grow a spine and require those signs to go down because it certainly was an issue in that earlier court case you mentioned. Um, essential poll today, there's been a lot of spin out there that there's this uh, uh, sense of momentum coming into the Yes campaign, slight tick up in their numbers. If you dig into them, though, you'll see that there's a 10% lift, which is statistically an anomaly, in my view, coming out of Queensland alone. Um, that looks like to be a bit of an outlier to me when you compare that poll to all the other polls which are running very much on trend. But, you know, you've got your... Your coterie of blokes, uh, your barbecue mates who don't normally talk to you about politics but are raising their voice. Where do you think they're still? Where do you think they're still sitting? 
Oh, I, I think they're still sitting no. But what I will say is there is a feeling uh, in the government that... Um, which uh, and from other sources, which suggests that at the very least the slide has stopped. So I, I don't think they'll be getting less than forty. Uh, I don't think they'll be getting much more than forty. It might it might be forty two, forty three. They'd love forty five at the moment, I reckon, Peter. That's how bad it is. But what we've seen mm. prior to that is just this decline. They think they've hit bottom. The only way is up from here. Uh, Victoria today, the new Premier, she hasn't even been in a week. Uh, she's now made a decision that every vacant block of residential land in Victoria will be taxed. Uh, previously, I think it only related to the inner city suburbs. Now it will be across the state. What do you think of this? Well, I think it's extraordinary because normally when a new Premier comes in, and I was saying this during our coverage of Dan Andrews going, uh, the old Premier leaves the new Premier an announcement to give him a bit of a lift which is usually some kind of tax cut. I saw a Bob Cardinal yes. from Morris Yammer. They had a vendor tax, which they cut, and they had a pokey machine tax, which they trimmed. And on this occasion, it's the opposite direction. But I guess it's just uh, symptomatic of how bad Victoria's debt problems are that Allen and Palace can't say, see a way through to a positive start. They've had to do a negative start. It's extraordinary. It's, it's, it's not good news for the government at all. I mean, I know they're miles out from an election, but it doesn't matter. How you start is really important. And what about Tasmania? I mean, things are on a knife edge down there. The uh, AG has been stood aside and the Premier's saying, you've got to back me or leave the parliament. Yeah, well, he tweeted it today, didn't he? He said, if, 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 if you don't sign over confidence and supply, I'm going to an election. Um, well, might have another election night to, to cover, Peter. That's the way I was thinking today. We've got a lot on the end of the year. I don't know if I'm looking forward to that, but it feels a bit that way, I have to say. You, I guess it, be that right. would be November or December. Yeah, I think things are pretty desperate. That is the last Liberal stronghold, obviously, in Australia. So we'll see what happens, Andrew Clennell. Thank you.